Hi and welcome to my third World of Tanks tutorial and in this tutorial I'll be telling you what tank to get first or what tank line in the tech tree to go down first because you've got so many different opportunities and uh, I think as a beginner it's really difficult to uh, choose uh, a line to go down and you know once you've chosen one you're kind of committed to it and it's pretty difficult to go down another one because you know you've put that much work into the first one so you don't really want to abandon it so I want to try to help you to choose the right line straight away so that you won't regret your decision afterwards now uh, there isn't really uh, something like a best line or worst line in this game like every line has got its advantages and disadvantages so what I'll be doing in this video is I'm gonna be doing a quick review on every tank line especially on the uh, highest tier tanks of that line which is usually the tier 10 tank uh, so I'll just be doing a very very quick uh, overview on each uh, of those tanks in the game and I'll be telling you which um, tanks are my favorite and yeah then at the end I hope I uh, will have helped you to choose uh, the right um, line to go first of all I recommend to you that you just play a few games with different tanks with different characteristics and you'll just try out with what type of tank you can play the best like say perhaps you prefer fast tanks with a bad armor or you like slow heavily armored tanks or you like TDs with great guns or you perhaps even prefer artillery or I don't know uh, so you best just uh, try out a few tanks randomly and check their characteristics and then according to that you compare the characteristics of the tank you like the most to the characteristics of the um, uh, tanks I'll be introducing to you and then you just choose what tank you uh, you prefer the most so or like the most First of all, I'm gonna introduce you to the five different main classes of tanks in the game because uh, the tanks that belong to the same class kind of have more or less the same characteristics and the same stats, so they perform more or less the same in the game. So that will give you a rough overview um, of what tank to get for the start. Uh, the first class are uh, is light tanks. Uh, light tanks um, are basically very fast tanks with a great signal range and great view range and the drawbacks of light tanks are uh, a really bad armor and usually they have got pretty bad guns as well. What you do with light tanks is you just run around the battlefield and you don't really try to actually damage anybody. What you try to do is you try to uh, scout on spot enemies for your allies and then you let your allies kill them for you. So uh, if you like really fast uh, maneuverable tanks and just like driving around the place and yeah, just spotting enemies for your allies, uh, that's just the class you want to play. Um, the second class that you could choose are medium tanks. Medium tanks are kind of all-rounder tanks, like they've got decent guns, they've got good speed, they've got decent armor, they've got, they're kind of medi medium and everything. They don't excel in any specific point, but they don't uh, lack anything in any point either so they're just you know they're just kind of all rounders medium tanks are the class of tank that I at the moment like the most the third class of tanks are heavy tanks heavy tanks are slow um, not very maneuverable tanks with great uh, armor and pretty good guns uh, so heavy tanks are the easiest tanks to play I would say uh, so if you uh, well if you feel 
not all that uh, secure with um, your tanks or you don't feel that happy yet uh, go for the heavy tanks because they're just the easiest to play uh, the third class are tank destroyers and tank destroyers are very interesting because uh, they lack a lot of um, health points and they usually don't have very good armor but uh, they have got the best guns in the game usually uh, the tank destroyers they do a lot of damage the reload time usually isn't that good but uh, with a lot of tank destroyers you can snipe very well so uh, if you are looking for great guns and uh, if you want to do some sniping uh, check out the tank destroyers uh, one thing you should be beware of uh, if you go for the tank destroyers is that most of them don't have a turret so if you want to turn your gun you have to turn your whole uh, hull of a tank or you have to turn your whole tank so that can be a bit annoying so if you think that that's going to be a problem for you uh, just avoid that class and then the fifth and last class is artillery and artillery is a uh, very specific and you have to have a kind of a gift to play artillery and to be totally honest I don't have that gift uh, artillery is uh, with artillery you just hide behind a bush or something like that and uh, you can switch to artillery spectator mode so that means you see the battlefield from a bird's eye view and then you can shoot uh, your grenades over huge distances and take out enemies like that I don't like artillery but I know a lot of people do um, and it can be really really frustrating if uh, an artillery kind of hitches on to you in a game so artilleries uh, have got the guns with the most damage throughout the game but the armor isn't very good and their HP really suck they've got the worst HP in the game and the reload time is pretty abominable on RTs as well so um, yeah those were the five main classes in the game and now I'm gonna um, talk a bit more uh, specifically to every single uh, top tier tank in the game the first nation you can choose on the tech tree are the Chinese now at the start um, you haven't got all that much choice what a line to take by the Chinese because there only is one but at tier 6 you have to decide if you want to go down light tanks and you can get to the tier 10 medium tank for 1 to 1 or you can take the medium tanks and then you can get to the 113 or you can go down the medium tanks to the top tier medium tank as well now uh, I think the Chinese are very very good uh, I really like them and I'm definitely going to get them in the game as well uh, especially this medium tank here is really good at the moment it's the best medium tank in the game uh, because its armor is great and it's got the best gun that a medium tank has in the game uh, the drawback, the main drawback of this tank, or it's actually got two main drawbacks. Uh, the first one is that its acceleration is pretty poor, although its top speed is okay, but its acceleration just isn't very good. And uh, the second problem is the g elevation arc angles of the gun uh, really suck as well, uh, especially the gun depression. Uh, it's no good at all. Um, the 113, the heavy tank, is uh, pretty good as well, but I don't like it quite as much as the 121. Um, these two tanks play more or less the same, so uh, again, the advantages of this 113 are a very good uh, speed and good uh, uh, maneuverability, but as this is a heavy tank, um, the acceleration is very very good for a heavy tank so uh, it's actually the 114 it plays more like a slow medium tank than like a real heavy tank uh, but the whole armor isn't any good at all it's really bad especially for a heavy tank so if you're looking for kind of a steel monster uh, just don't get this one because it isn't uh, 
Now, uh, if you want to get the medium tank for 121, um, you've got two different choices. You can either go the light tanks or the medium tanks. Now, uh, that depends a lot on your taste. If you uh, like light tanks a lot, go for light tanks. If you like medium tanks, go for medium tanks. But I would recommend you to go for medium tanks. Um, the reason for that is because um, at tier 8 your crew will already have a lot of experience and then if you train them to work on the WZ-120, the tier 9 tank, uh, they won't lose that much experience uh, because it's uh, you don't change the class of tank while uh, when you uh, train them to uh, the medium tank from the light tank they lose a lot more experience and that's a real shame to waste so uh, I would recommend you to take the medium tanks and I think they're more fun as well so yeah I'm gonna take the medium tanks and I'm gonna get this tank which I will soon hopefully the next nation are the French and the French are really good in this game I think they're actually a bit overpowered the reason for that is that uh, all the tier 10 tanks of the French or all the high tier tanks of the French have got autoloader systems uh, autoloaders work like this uh, say you reload and in your reload you uh, your reload takes longer than uh, the average reload of your tier, a lot longer, say four times as long. But then, uh, after that reload, you've got four shots in your autoloader clip and you can shoot them rapidly uh, behind each other. So you just uh, go BAM! 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 And then you reload, say, 40 seconds and then you go BAM! 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 again. So that's really, really good. Um, so the first um, line in the French tech tree are the tank destroyers and the French tank destroyers are really good uh, they're actually the best tank destroyers in the game um, now up to tier 6 uh, I don't think they're very good but from tier 7 uh, they start to uh, become real fun playing um, especially the tier 10 tank um, it's got a it's got a autoloader clip with free ammunition in it and every shot can do up to thousand damage that means you can destroy any tank in the game with only one load of ammunition that's uh, kind of unique within the game um, the uh, th the tank destroyers, um, especially the uh, tank destroyers starting with tier 7, um, are very maneuverable and they've got pretty decent frontal armor, but they've got a lot of weak spots in the front as well. So um, you want to uh, uh, fight from the second line of attack usually, because then your enemies can't shoot at your weak spots that easily. Um, um, problem with this tier 10 tank destroyer is its reload time. Uh, it's about 40 seconds. So in between your autoloader clips, you have to reload 40 seconds. That means you're uh, 40 seconds of auto defenselessness, and that can be pretty frustrating sometimes. Um, the tier 10 tank in the heavy tank line is the AMX 50B, and the AMX 50B has an autoloader clip with. Uh, four shots in it, and each shot uh, does about fifth, uh, 500 damage. Uh, the AMX 50B is a very good tank. Uh, it's very fast. It's the fastest heavy tank in the game. It does 65 kilometers uh, per hour, and it's very maneuverable. It turns very fast. Uh, the main problem with this tank is its armor. It's got the worst armor of any tier 10 heavy tank in the game. Um, but uh, that's the only uh, problem with this tank because in all other uh, in all other points, it's just really superior to its um, to its opponents. The tier ten tank uh, in the medium line of the French is the bat shot, and uh, the bat shot is very good as well. Uh, it's got a six shot autoloader clip 
and um, it's the most maneuverable um, tier 10 medium tank in the game. It's really fast, it does 65 kilometers per hour as well, just as a heavy tank, but uh, in comparison to the heavy tank, its uh, acceleration is way better, and uh, its uh, rate of fire is faster as well, of course, because it's a medium tank. Uh, the damage isn't quite as high, but it's nearly as high, and the gun's really good, especially for a medium tank. Um, if you decide to go down this line, uh, don't let yourself be discouraged from these three tanks at the start, because they are kind of crap. Uh, they, it's no fun at all playing these tanks, at least it wasn't any fun for me. Uh, they're light tanks, but they play not like light tanks, they play like heavy tanks. They're slow and heavily armoured, but they've got bad guns, and oh, it's just really... Playing through these tanks is really terrible. But from tier 5 on, uh, this line is just pure fun. Uh, I really recommend this line. Um, and then the French artillery. Uh, French artillery is a lot of fun as well. Um, especially this tier 8 artillery uh, is very interesting. Uh, because it's got a full shot autoloader clip as well. And it can do uh, 1200 damage with every shot in that autoloader. Uh, so that's really deadly in our artillery and it's very fast too it's uh, it's the best artillery I think because its damage isn't that high but uh, it's got a good reload time in comparison to the other RTs and it's got a good aiming time and a good accuracy so that kind of makes up for the low alpha damage and it's got a really good DPM rate so um, yeah, um, if you want to get an artillery, uh, this probably is the best choice here. Next come the Germans. Uh, now, if you look at the German tech tree, at the start it's very confusing because it's that packed. Uh, right at the top, we've got the RT line, and the German artillery is very good. Uh, a lot of people say it's the best in the game. I don't. But uh, it is very good. Uh, the top tier RT, the tier 8 RT of the Germans, uh, has got a lot of damage. Uh, and it's yeah, it's very good, especially for uh, those of you who like to play kind of stationary artillery. So not like moving around a lot. Uh, so yeah, it's got a lot of damage. But uh, it hasn't got the most damage in the game. It's got a decent aiming time and a decent reload time. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty good. Um, the next line is the tank destroyer line. Now, uh, up to tier 4, the German tank destroyers are very, very good. Um, then tier 5 and uh, 6 are a bit disappointing. The tanks look very good, but they aren't. Uh, they're just, yeah, they're kind of disappointing. And then, from tier 7 on, the German tank destroyers are just awesome. Uh, you just keep on getting kill after kill after kill. Um, the Jagdpanzer is pretty maneuverable and it's got a decent gun. And then, after the Jagdpanzer, you can choose between the Jagdpanzer 2 and the Ferdinand. And, um, I would recommend you to get the Ferdinand here, because... It's got uh, the Ferdinand has got better armor, but it's slower. The Jagdpanzer is kind of a tank which is made of paper, but therefore it's a lot faster. Uh, but they both carry the same gun. All the same, I would get the Ferdinand because it's just got a really tough frontal armor. Then comes the Yak Tiger, and the Yak Tiger is a really good sniping tank. Uh, it's just so much fun to play this tank. Uh, my friends got it, and I played it once on the test server, and it's just really a lot of fun. And then comes the Yak Panzer E100. Um, the Yak Panzer E100 is just great too because it just dishes out that much damage. It's got a super powerful gun. It can do up to 1,500 damage per shot. Uh, so. It's just really, it's real beast, this thing. Um, it's got a good armor too. The disadvantage is that it's pretty slow and it's very big. 
and uh, its uh, speed and yeah, traverse speed are very good, so it's a very easy target for artillery. But uh, playing this tank is a lot of fun, especially in platoons. So uh, yeah, if you're looking for uh, something with a lot of damage, make sure to check this tank out. Uh, if you're looking for a snipey tank, though, um, this one won't do because it just uh, the accuracy just isn't good enough. The next tank is the mouse, and the mouse is the kind of tier 10 tank that I hate the most because uh, the advantages of the mouse are. Uh, definitely it's great armor it's the uh, most heavily armored tank in the game and the second advantage is that it's got the most HP in the game as well it's got 3000 HP but uh, you really need those HP as well because uh, your gun really sucks uh, and the uh, it's huge and really slow it's the slowest tank in the game so you will have real problems with artillery and uh, it's so slow it's so heavy uh, it's just it, I don't really think it's any fun playing because you know it's just too big as well you just get scouted straight away uh, if you uh, I, I really can recommend this tank I mean if you like kind of huge heavily armored tanks okay you may want to get it, but uh, I don't think it's any good, really. The next tank of the line is the E100. And the E100 uh, is great. It's not very fast, and uh, it's not very maneuverable either, but it's got a great gun. It's got the gun of the tier 10 heavy tanks with the most damage and the most penetration. Its reload time isn't all that good, but it's got a great armor and it's pretty big. It's got a decent speed and uh, it's just if you meet one of these in the battlefield, just make sure to clear out because it's just really, uh, really good. So uh, I can't really play this tank all that well. Uh, my friend can. Uh, but I'm not really the expert on this tank, but uh, like my friend and me, we did a lot of training um, fights against each other on the test server and so on, and he won every single fight in this tank. It's just so good. Uh, it's kind of a shame that I can't play it that well, but uh, it's, it's really good. I can really recommend it to you. Um, the next tank is line is for medium tanks. And uh, at the top of that line, you've got the E50 out of M. And this tank is really good. It's got, uh, it's the most accurate tank in the game. Uh, so it's obviously a sniper. Uh, its gun is, uh, it's kind of lacking, it's kind of lacking the alpha damage a bit. But its penetration potential is awesome. And its rate of fire is pretty good too. And its accuracy is just great it's so good 0 0.30 accuracy that's the most accurate uh, tier 10 tank in the game so if you want to do sniping and if you want to like if you want a fast maneuverable sniping platform definitely get this tank uh, it's a lot of fun and I've uploaded a gameplay video in which I do some sniping in this tank so if you want to have uh, more information on it uh, just uh, look at that or check that video out and then uh, the, the sixth line um, in the German tech tree is this line of light tanks here. Now these are scouts and uh, I don't really think it's worthwhile going down this line uh, because of course it can be nice to have a scout uh, like uh, a good scout but uh, for one thing this isn't the best scouting tank in the game so uh like say the Russians have got a better one and the French too, so I wouldn't uh get this tank. Uh this wouldn't be my first choice for scouting. And then uh it the line ends at tier six, so you can't go on after tier six and uh that's a bit of a shame because uh, there are so many other uh good tanks later on, it's a shame to waste your energy going up to tier six and then just stop there. So I wouldn't really get this line. So altogether the Germans uh usually are 
like very heavily armored and uh just very yeah very with great guns usually uh i can especially recommend you this tank this tank and this tank and if you're kind of an artillery fan check out the uh, gw type e as well because yeah it's pretty cool as well now we come to the british uh as for chinese the british as well um were only added previously to the um to world of tanks so uh the tech tree isn't that big yet there are only three lines um there are medium tanks tank destroyers and heavy tanks uh, now the british tanks in general are very snipey tanks uh, except for the tank destroyers that's pretty strange because usually the tank destroyers are the snipers but with the british it's just the other way around like the heavies and the medium tanks are snipers and the tank destroyers aren't really snipers so yeah the medium tank line uh, isn't very good to tell you the truth up to tier 8 it isn't very good uh, tier 9 and 10 those tanks are great uh, especially this tier 10 tank it's got one of the most accurate uh, guns in the game it's got a great gun uh, its armor isn't very good but uh, yeah its gun really makes up for it and uh, it isn't it's the slowest medium tank in the game it's only 40 uh, kilometers per hour but it excels really quickly uh, and it's Traverse speed is and um, third traverse speed and whole traverse speed is really great as well, so that kind of makes up for that. So then I'm going to quickly skip the TDs because I'm going to do them uh, last, and uh, I'm going to first of all speak about the heavy tanks. Now, uh, first of all, you can choose two different lines to go down to get to your heavy tanks, and um, I would recommend this upper line. The reason I recommend that is because of this tank. Because uh, this tank has got such a great gun. It's got a one-shot gun. You can one-shot any tank in the game. So you'll
The next tech tree we get to is a bit bigger again. It's the American. Uh, right at the top, we've got um, the line of a T57 Heavy. And, yeah, it's pretty interesting, actually, uh, because up to Tier 9, you've only got light and medium tanks, like, uh, till Tier 7, uh, your tanks are scouts. And then you go to the Chaffee uh, here, which is a very, very good Tier 5 scout, um, and, yeah, it's worthwhile getting it, I think, and I probably will later on, too. And then, um, from Tier 8 on, You've got medium tanks till tier nine, and then at tier ten you get a heavy tank. Uh, your tanks have got a auto loader clip uh, from tier seven till tier ten, but all the same, I don't think these tanks are that good, especially the tier ten tank. Now um, the tier eight and tier nine tank are kind of okay, but uh, the tier ten tank isn't very good, I think, because it just it just okay. It's got a four clip autoloader, but uh, it's just like kind of mediocre in every other aspect. So uh, I don't think uh, it's worthwhile getting this tank. Uh, if you're looking for a good autoloader heavy tank, just get the AMX 50B in the French line, and uh, be happy with that because it's a lot better than this one here. The next two lines are tank destroyers. And uh, you've got a choice between two different types of tank destroyers of Americans. So you can have tank destroyers with a turret, and you can have tank destroyers without a turret. Now, uh, first of all, of course, you think uh, tank destroyers with a turret, wow, that's great, uh, I need to get these tank destroyers. Um, that's what I thought at the start as well. That's why I grinded my way up to tier 5 here. But... Uh, as you can see, I sold my T5 tank again. I haven't got it in my garage anymore. And uh, that's because I realized how uh, crap these tanks actually are. Because, th okay, they have got a turret, but that's kind of more or less the only good thing about these tanks. And because of the turret, they lack accuracy, reload time, uh, damage, penetration. They just lack everything except of a turret. So... There's no point in getting them really because they're just bad. They lack gun depression. They or oh, I I really think those tanks are. It's just unnecessary getting them. Um. So after now seeing two kind of bad tank lines, at last we get to a good one again, which is the tank line of American tanks without a turret, because uh, these tanks are really great. Uh, they aren't that good up to tier seven. But from tier 8 to tier 10, they're just awesome because uh, they're the most heavily armored tanks in the game. Uh, they're pretty slow, but they've got awesome guns. And at tier 8 and tier 9, they've got a very low profile. And they've got such good an armor, it's just incredible. They're, it's un impossible to penetrate them from the front. Like, look at the armor here. It's got... Uh, Oh, it doesn't even say the armor. Okay, I'll just quickly go into the vehicle details. 305 millimeters of frontal armor. That's amazing. Uh, it's it's just absurd. It's impossible to penetrate this tank from the front. It's just really absolutely impossible. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm really I really like this tank. I played it on the test server. Uh, I definitely want to get it. I like the T. 95 and the T28 a lot as well. Uh, okay, you can perhaps argue that the Wolverine and Jackson aren't that great, but uh, you know who cares? For only tier five and six, will be through them in say months time. So um, it's worthwhile, you know, grinding your way through bad tanks like these to get to stuff like this baby here. Uh, I can really recommend this one. The next tank is the. Uh, medium tank the M48 Patton. Uh, the M48 Patton is uh, very nice it's got a great gun uh, it's pretty maneuverable and its armor is okay but it's not very good really and yeah it's just like kind of a all-rounder tank again the main drawback of this tank is its enormous size it's bigger even than the tier 10 heavy tank of the Americans uh, which um, 
lets you be detected very easily and shot down from a distance and by artillery. So you have to be very careful and you often uh, should hide behind houses or buildings with this tank. But uh, if you figured out how to play this tank which doesn't take very long because it's kind of a pretty noob friendly tank it's real fun to play i really enjoy playing this tank i played it a lot on the test server and uh, yeah i really like it um and then we come to the t110 e5 which kind of is the star of the uh, american tech tree because this tank uh, a lot of people argue this tank is the best heavy tank in the game and uh i'm not quite convinced about that, but I think it's really good. Uh, even so, because it's got super armor, the guns kind of hasn't got all that good alpha damage, but it shoots really fast and uh, has got good penetration, and it's really maneuverable. It's just, you know, just pretty good. It's yeah, I really like this tank. So. Uh, it's nothing that really, you know, it doesn't require any special tactics or something like that. You just jump into a game with it and you know, just start playing and, uh, you know, success will be sure. Uh, yeah, I really re recommend this tank a lot. Uh, although it doesn't play all that much like a heavy tank, it more like kind of plays like a heavy medium tank. But it still plays more like a medium tank, I think. Now, if you want to get to the t uh you can kind of either... Um, get to it of the M4 and the M4 Sherman Jumbo and then you get to the T29 or you can go uh, by the T1 and the M6 I would recommend you to go over M4 and the M4 A3 E2 um, there are two reasons for that first of all uh, if you go this line you can still go over medium tanks afterwards and secondly uh, the M6 and the T1 heavy isn't all that good, but it's okay. But the M6 really sucks, so uh, it's really just boring playing this tank. And uh, playing the M4 Sherman uh, Jumbo is okay. It's not great or anything, but it's a lot better than the M6. And when you come to tier 7 in this line, you're kind of relieved because uh, this tank is really good and. Uh, these, it, uh, the line continues to be good uh, throughout tier 7, 8, 9 and 10. Next we come to the artillery. Uh, the tier 8 artillery of Americans is the T92 and this is the tank in the game with the most alpha damage. Uh, it can do up to 2500 damage with a shot. That's really amazing. Um, now. Uh, I know it's kind of a nasty thing to do, but I just wanted to try this out on the test server. So what I did is I crept up behind a 113 from my team, and I just shot into the back of him, and uh, I just one shot at him. So he got really pissed off and started uh, dis dissing me in the chat and so on. But uh, yeah, it wasn't a very nice thing to do, but I just wanted to try it out, and uh, yeah, the alpha damage is absurdly good in this thing. The drawbacks uh, are uh, long reload time, it's got the longest reload time of any tank in the game and it's got a very bad uh, aiming time as well. But another good thing about this tank is that it's got a big splash damage radius. The splash damage radius is about 10 meters and if you shoot with premium ammunition uh, it's even 30 meters. And now we come to the last tech tree, which is the Russian tech tree. Uh, the Russian tech tree is again one of the older tech trees in the game, so it's pretty big. And uh, first of all, uh, right at the top, you get the tank destroyers. You've got two different tank destroyers, and both of them are pretty good. Uh, you've got the Object 268 and the Object 263. Now, um, the the kind of the tech tree la branches divide at tier seven. And uh, from tier 7 to tier 9, the upper tech tree branch is better, but at tier 10, the lower one's a lot better. Uh, this tank is one of my absolute favourite tanks in the game, the Object 263. Um, because it's got a great gun, which hasn't got all that good alpha damage, but it's got an awesome penetration. It's got a good fire rate, and 
it's got really accurate it's 0 0.32 accuracy uh this tank is really fast as well it does 55 kilometers per hour and is uh the fastest tank destroyer in the game and uh its armor is really good too it's got about 250 millimeters of frontal armor which is really difficult to penetrate from the front especially because it's sloped that well uh i've uploaded a replay of this tank so if you want to if you're interested in it, you can watch that. Then the other tank destroyer is for Object 268. Uh, now that's got about twice as much alpha damage as uh, for Object 263, and it's got a really good armor as well. Uh, actually, the armor was buffed recently. Uh, it's really fast as well, but uh, the reload time isn't as good as the real time for object 263 and uh, the object 268 is a real good sniper as well uh, it's, it's got a very low profile it's pretty fast um, so you can do good sniping in both of these tanks and both these tank destroyers are worth getting uh, just yeah uh, if you like sniping tank destroyers just get them they're really good um, uh, the main problem with object 268 is it's bad uh, like it can't turn the weapon very far without turning the hole so that's a bit of a shame but otherwise uh, both of these tank destroyers are really good and another tank that I want to uh, quickly tell you about is the ISU-152 uh, because it's kind of worthwhile just getting this tank only because of going through this tank here because this tank is really absurdly good uh, because of its BL-10 gun, uh, I just want to quickly show you this gun, um, here, the BL-10 gun, it can do up to 950 damage, and that's not a tier 8 tank, tier 8, I mean, a tier 10 heavy tank does 500 damage on average, this does something like 800, that's amazing, uh, so that's really worthwhile uh, getting this tank. The next tank is the T-62A. Uh, the T-62A is a very nice tank, I think. Uh, it's got a great uh, great turret armor, and uh, the the frontal hull armor is pretty okay as well. It's very maneuverable. The gun isn't very good. It's got a good fire rate, but its damage and penetration aren't that good. Uh, this tank is a lot of fun in platooning. Uh, I've uploaded a gameplay video of this tank, and I'm platooning with my friend, uh, General Denny. So, uh, if you want to have close information on this one, you can watch that gameplay video. Uh, on its own, this tank isn't that great, but in platoons, uh, it's real dynamite. Uh, so, if you play a lot with your friends, and uh, enjoy playing with your friends, get this tank, because it's just one of the tanks which is the most uh, fun in platoons. Next, we've got the heavy tanks. The Russians, again, have got two different lines of heavy tanks. You can go to the IS-7 and the IS-4. Now, uh, the IS-7 line, the tanks haven't got that good armor, uh, but they've got good guns and good speed. Uh, the IS-4 row has got uh, heavily armored tanks, which are slow, with good guns as well. So, uh most of those these tanks here always have the same guns which are parallel to each other um i uh i've got the sti here so i'm soon gonna have is4 uh but uh now i kind of regret going down the is4 line because uh, the is7 is better so uh if you've got the decision uh get the is7 i would recommend the is7 to you uh I think the KV-4 is better than the IS-3, and the STI is better than the IS-8, but the IS-7 is better than the IS-4, so, uh, yeah, get this tank, it's very good. Uh, then, at last, uh, we come to our last branch in the tech tree, which is uh, the Russian artillery. Uh, the Russian artillery is very interesting, because at tier 6, it's got the most damage. I have this one experience. I wasn't. Uh, I was playing in my KV4 at that time. I still had my KV4, and um, let me just quickly check out the HP of a KV4. Uh, let's see. A KV4 has got 1,600 HP, and um, I one of this SU14 
uh, was in my team and he was a team killer so he came up behind me and shot me right in the back and he actually one shot at me he took uh, 1600 HP of me in one shot so that's really good uh, then at tier 8 uh, the Russian artillery kind of lacks alpha damage but it's got the best uh, aiming time and reload time and uh, it's pretty maneuverable as well so that kind of makes up for that so yeah the Russian artillery is kind of like decent it's nothing special but it's uh, it's okay and uh, yeah yeah it's pretty nice and I'm probably gonna get it in time of all it's not like kind of one of the first tech tree branches I'll be rushing for uh, yeah so now we're kind of uh, through over tanks and I hope I could kind of help you along with what tank to choose uh, there's one little thing left and uh, that's in between you can always see these tanks here with a gold price uh, set below them and they don't really belong to any tech tree branch those are premium tanks you can buy them for real money and uh, the advantage of them is that they earn you uh, a lot more money than uh, normal tanks and they uh, you don't need research to get them so you can just straight away get it say a tier 8 tank um, now is it worthwhile getting these tanks uh, depends on how serious you're about playing this game uh, like I really enjoy this game and after I've played it one year I decided to get uh, a premium tank because uh, of the uh, credit farming you can do with it but if you're like, just getting started in the game you don't really need one and you know if you're thinking about getting one I would just wait till you're kind of sure you're gonna keep on playing this game for a while because they're pretty expensive like a tier 8 premium tank costs about 40 euros and that's pretty expensive so just you know make sure you really you're really serious about this game and if you are then uh, it perhaps isn't a bad idea but you know if you're just getting started don't bother about these tanks yeah that was uh, my third tutorial and sorry that it was that long uh, but you know there are that many tanks in this game that uh, it's just really uh, it's really difficult you know even keeping up reviewing all of them and so on so uh, I have a lot of work to do in future and yeah I hope I could help you along as I said already with uh, the choice of your tag just yeah just uh, start a bit with playing and you know just uh, see what kind of tank you prefer and then uh, I hope I could help you yeah uh, if I could please uh, write in the comments and like this video perhaps even subscribe to my channel there will be a lot of other useful and uh, cool World of Tanks videos on it yeah thanks for watching and see you next time bye bye